remind the youth they got to be at the home entry center at 5, and then we'll feed them. Awesome, awesome. Fed physically and spiritually. Lots of that going on. Well, we'll um, as at this time, our ushers are going to come forward, and they're coming from the back to collect your offering. And then Dad will come forward and pray a blessing over it and over us as we give. And as they're doing that, feel free to sing with us in Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. God's blessing. I want you to stand with me. We're first going to give him thanks for his blessings upon us, how he has blessed you this week. You know, it is so wonderful to hear people that come to you and tell you what the Lord has done. Maybe a catch of shrimp, maybe some other way in business or something that he's done in your family. And you know what? It's a time where we give God the glory for that. We're not giving in order to get. Remember that. We're giving because God gives us an opportunity to take this, roll it around, and be a blessing to others. Okay? And that's good. Sister Donna, I see you there. I want to say this. Here's an opportunity. Sister Donna, you'll see in the bulletin in the very bottom, and she's going to come share with us later on this, is going on a missions trip, Creative Ministries to Africa. Okay? Late winter. And her expenses will be $3,750. She'll be sharing later on, okay, with us. And we're setting that up in January. But for her to get her plane ticket and place that in, uh, she's needing a certain amount. So uh, there's an opportunity. As God has blessed you, you can bless Sister Donna and help her with that. And you can put it on the memo, in the envelope, anytime, and it will go to her. Uh, that's what this is about. God blesses his people so that we can be a blessing for the kingdom. So I want you to just lift your hands with me. And we're first going to rejoice in how God has done in your life. Father, we thank you this morning. Every blessing you have poured out upon us, we pour back to you in praise. We thank you, Lord, how you have supplied. We thank you how you have met our needs. We thank you, Lord, how you have come through. Lord, in our situations, we give you the praise. Lord, you are our source. There's many resources in this life, but you are our source. And we thank you for that this morning. Thank you for every blessing. Now, Lord, I ask that you would take this offering, multiply it to meet the needs that this church can continue to be a blessing to each and every one. Father, I ask a blessing over every home in this congregation. I ask a blessing over every family. Bless their businesses. Bless their homes. Bless their family. Bless their hands. Bless their hearts. God, in every way, bless their energies. Bless their efforts. I ask, Lord, that you would open doors. I ask, Lord, that you would show them favor. I ask, Lord, that you would make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, you you are our source. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you thanks this morning. Hallelujah. Church, give the Lord a clap offering of praise for his great goodness to you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Lord, we continue our worship. Lord God, we give you praise. You are awesome, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, Lord, for your presence. Praise you, Lord God. God, thank you for your awesomeness, Lord God, for coming among us, Lord God, I pray. Isaiah 9 says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. 
For those who lived in a land of deep shadows, light, sunburst of light, you repopulated the nation. You expanded its joy. Oh, they're so glad in your presence. Festival joy, the joy of a great celebration, sharing rich gifts and warm greetings. For a child has been born for us. The gift of a son for us. He'll take over the running of the world. His names will be Amazing Counselor, Strong God, Eternal Father, Prince of Wholeness. His ruling and authority will grow and there will be no limits to the wholeness that he brings. Would you just give him a clap offering? Lord, I praise you, Prince of Wholeness. I praise you, Prince of Wholeness. You are awesome, and we're here to raise a hallelujah to you, Jesus. Be glorified. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, King. Praise you, hallelujah, Lord. Be lifted high. Be lifted high, Jesus. Ooh, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah, louder than the unbelief, hallelujah, hallelujah, I raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody, I raise a hallelujah.
I walk among you. I'm not far. I'm not at a distance. I walk among you. I've made a way where I can be near. I've made a way where I can be close to you. I've made a way where you can sense my presence. I've made a way where you can feel me. I'm not at a distance. I've made a way where I can be near, and it's through my spirit. My spirit dwells among you. My spirit is here today. I'm not far. You're not alone. You're not alone. I've made a way where I can be close. Reach out to me. Reach out to me. Confide in me. Know that I am near and not far. Know that I desire to be close to you. I desire to be in you. I desire to give you life. I'm not at a distance. I'm here. I've made a way where I can be near you. And Lord, I thank you for that. And Lord, I thank you for that. Hallelujah. I thank you for that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and thank Him. And reach out to Him. Thank Him that He is close. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you, Lord, that you're so real and so personable. Holy Spirit, we thank you today. You abide. You abide with your people. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We receive that by faith, and we thank you, Lord, for that encouragement. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Sing it to Him one more time. His name is Jesus. He's Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Sing it to Him. You're Jesus. You're with us today. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. About the name of Jesus, we give you praise. You are master. He's master, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Thank you, Lord. Church, would you give the Lord a clap offering of praise this morning for His faithfulness, His goodness to you, hallelujah, and His presence. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated this morning. Our children now will go to Children's Church. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Lindsay. Praise the Lord. 
If you are not familiar with a Pentecostal church and a Pentecostal setting, just want to say this to you, what just took place. There was a message in tongues given, very scriptural, in the Word of God, as God wants to manifest Himself to us. And the message was given, and there was an interpretation. That ter- interpretation was to strengthen you, was to edify and to build up the body of Christ. And I'm thankful for that. So just so you're not confused, you look in the book of Corinthians and you'll find out that it's there and God has spoken and He wanted to build you up, let you know His presence is here and He's here to strengthen you and comfort you and I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful that He manifests. I'm thankful for supernatural. It's supernatural or it's not anything. That's just the way I see it. And that's the way it is. And God loves you that much, cares about you and I that much that He would speak to us on that way through gifts of the Spirit. So praise God. Just wanted to let you know, I don't know everyone here, I'm so thankful to see you, but in case you didn't know what just went on, that's what took place. Now, my eyes are not as good as they used to be, but I think I'm seeing Mary Ritter back there. Is that her? Mary Ritter has uh, roots here on the beach and in Wanchi's among our school. And uh, also throughout this district with the ladies' ministries. And uh, Mary, we're glad to have you this morning. And I want you to stand and just edify and build up the church some more, okay? (laughs) Yeah, come on. Amy, we welcome you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to have you, Mary, and your guest. We welcome you this morning. And others, we're glad that you're here today. And uh, so thankful the Lord's here. Amen. And His presence is here among us. I, this morning, want to minister a word to you. And uh, The title of, oh, and I want to say this, okay, uh, please come back tonight. I know there's a lot going on, and you may say poor scheduling. You know what? It's hard to schedule everything. It's a busy time. But I want to encourage you to come back, support Tucker, and uh, bring someone that is needing a, a, just a shot of hope, okay? A shot of, of encouragement that you can see what God is doing, and Tucker's going to share his testimony with us. God has done great things, is doing great things, and uh, come back tonight, bring somebody with you at 6 o'clock for our service. (coughs) This morning I want to share a thought with you. I placed the title of it as this, Remember the Message. Remember the Message. And uh, I know we're in the Christmas season, and uh, I know normally we probably wait till Christmas morning to share the Christmas message. Well, um, what we're going to do this morning is we're going to share a Christmas message, okay? And uh, I'll tell you where we're coming from. You know, we're vastly approaching Christmas Day. Uh, It's right on top of us. It'll be here before you know it. But, you know, we're living in a day, we're living in a time where just everything is so commercialized, everything is so busy, everything is all about Christmas but not really about Christmas. If you know what I mean, it, it's all uh, has its way and has its, has its uh, meaning and its push. And, you know, if we're not careful, we can really, in the church, miss, miss the real meaning of Christmas. And we can really get caught up in it and, uh, and all that it is to it. But I, and miss the meaning of Christmas. I was, yesterday was uh, visiting my father and... Uh, 
My dad's 93 now. <clears throat> He's seen a lot of Christmas time, a lot of Christmas seasons. And uh, as I was speaking to him and I was talking to him and I said, Dad, we'll, I'll get back this weekend. We'll get some Christmas stuff down. We'll get the tree down and, and uh, from upstairs and put it up if you'd like and whatnot. And I said, you know, it, uh, he said, okay, you know, weren't really very lively with it. And I said, you know, Christmas will be here before you know it. And uh, he looked at me and he said, yeah, yes. And uh, he said, no, no. He said, it's really here every day. He said, it's here every day. He said, and we really need to see Christmas as every day. And I said, you know what, you're, you're right. And I know what he was speaking of, and you do too. He was saying, we need to be every day thankful for what Jesus Christ has done, the birth of our Savior, the birth of our Lord. It should be a day where every day you get up and you are so thankful that a Savior has come. And I know that's what he was saying to me. But, you know, we miss it. And then maybe we wait till one sermon on Christmas Day. And you know what? So I'll just tell you ahead of time, this Sunday and the next, what do we have? Two more, as long as the Lord gives me something. I know I'm jumping out here in faith, but I, uh, even as the Lord now, I got two more Christmas messages to give. And uh, I just want to start today. Just want to start today to get our mind going and our focus going on this reason for the time that we are in, okay? So today is going to be a Christmas message, and you'll know ahead of time the next couple of weeks. It's going to be a focus on Christmas and Christ, okay? So this morning we're going to begin with this one. And uh, I was just thinking of how the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and when you think of them, synoptic Gospels, in other words, it's saying they see the same thing. They see the same thing. What do they see? They see Jesus. They see His birth. They see uh, uh, His life. And they see the same thing, but with all three of them, every one of them in giving us a description of Jesus and His life, they come about in a different way. They have a different emphasis, all three of them. And I was just thinking about the emphasis that each one gave. For instance, Matthew. When you read in the book of Matthew, it emphasizes Jesus, and his emphasis is he's the Messiah. He's the Messiah, and it's all through there in the book of Matthew. Messiah meaning what? He's the anointed one, and that's his emphasis. But then you read about Mark, and Mark is describing him, and Mark emphasizes Jesus as the servant. He's a servant, and that's why when you read in the book of Mark, more than any other gospels, Mark is describing his miracles. Mark is describing his healings. Why? He's saying he's a servant. He's got a servant's heart. And he's showing his demonstration by serving in that way. And then when you get to Luke, and Luke emphasizes him in another way, and it is that he's Savior. He's Savior. And as I was just looking at all three of them and, and how they describe Jesus, they're saying the same thing, they see the same thing, but Jesus is all three. And I just begin to rejoice even in writing this sermon to think, wow, think of what we have to celebrate in this short time. It really should be every day of the year because you're living it. What is it? Aren't you thankful today you know Jesus as the Messiah? Praise God, Jesus is the anointed one. Hallelujah, one, the anointed one. And aren't you thankful today you know him as the servant? Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but I came to serve. And to do what? Give my life a ransom for many. Hallelujah. The many are me and you. He's given his life from a servant's heart as a ransom for you and I. And aren't you thankful you know him as Savior? Praise God. Savior, that's who Jesus is. He said, I came to seek and to save. I'm thankful He was seeking me out, aren't you? I'm thankful He's come to this earth to seek and to save that which is lost. I was lost, but now I'm found. All because of Jesus, my Savior. Praise God. You get it? Lift your hands a little bit and just think. wake up with me this morning, Messiah. Savior, my servant heart that he had for you and I. It's good this morning, and that's where we're at with this. Church, aren't you thankful? So as we turn our focus on him, 
We're turning our focus on him to begin looking. And today I want to go to the book of Luke. And I want to go into this account. And we're going to look at the angel Gabriel and how he came with a message to Mary. He came with a message to her. Title of this, Remember the Message. Remember the message. And I want to look at the angel Gabriel's message to Mary. He gave her three truths. Just going to give you three truths today of what he told Mary. That message that he told Mary. And out of that I want you and I to see three truths that every one of us need to be remembering each and every day. We need to remember the message. He gave her three truths. And those truths apply to my life and apply to yours. And I want to tell you if you'll hone them in. If you will really focus on them, your Christmas will be different. It will be different. So here we go, Luke 1, chapter 1, verse 26. Let's start reading there, 26 through 38. Luke 1, 26 through 38. Remember the message, and we're going to see the angel Gabriel's message to Mary. He's already come to Zechariah with a message, and uh, I went on to this one, wanted to focus on it today. Verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at the saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. And therefore also the Holy One who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month of her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Father, we thank you for your powerful word. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have today to look in your word, see the truths, God, to see the promises, God, to apply them to our heart and life, and God, be taken to another place of belief and trust and faith in you. God, I ask that you would bless our time together. I pray, God, for spiritual discernment for each and every one of us to be able to receive from your word, God, that we may see clearly today and apply these truths to our life. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray that everything said and done would lift you up and exalt you. For, Lord, you alone are worthy. Thank you, Lord. Amen. First message. The first message that we always need to remember from this account is this. His, meaning Christ, kingdom will never end. His kingdom is never, ever going to end. Look at verse 33. Luke 1, verse 33 tells us this, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Now church, I want you to just try to get there. Can you imagine what it must have been like for Mary? The angel Gabriel appears to her, and he gives her such words. 
He tells her this, you're going to have a son even though you've never known a man. Then he goes to number two and he's going to be called Jesus and he's going to be the son of the most highest one. And then he's going to tell her this. He says, the Lord's going to give him the throne of David. The Lord, not popularity, not a vote, not not parties, not opinions. No, the Lord is going to give him a throne, the throne of David. And then he says to top it off, oh yeah, I just want to tell you this. And he's going to reign over that throne. He's going to reign over that kingdom. And then just to top it off, that kingdom's never, ever, ever going to end. Can you just imagine to be told that from an angel? And you imagine it's big. No doubt it's big. It's, it's way out there. All of this that he has told her is out there and it's very large. And everyone that, in that day, and just like you and I in this day, we know this, church, we know that no king lasts forever. There is no king, there is no kingdom that ever lasts forever. They all have their day, they all have their time, and they all have their season. History backs it up. History books tell us of that. They never, no matter how powerful the king, no matter how large and in charge, No matter how big and enormous his kingdom is, it all comes to an end at some point. I just begin to think and I begin to look at some of the kingdoms of this earth. Just want to remind you, he's telling her, listen, he's going to reign his kingdom and it's never ever going to end. Think about the kingdoms of this earth. Think about the ones we know about in the word of God. Think about Pharaoh's. My, they were powerful. Pharaohs of that day. Think about it in Egypt. You talk about kingdoms, pyramids. You talk about the magnificent of them kingdoms. You talk about the power and the rulership of those kings and pharaohs of that time. They lasted for hundreds and hundreds of years. Then you think about Solomon. Solomon. Uh, I just had to go back there. I'm, I'm on the... I began to think about this and went back to 2 Chronicles. I want to read this. You talk about a kingdom and a king. You talk about something just of such magnitude. Well, look at this in 2 Chronicles. Did I give you that scripture? Verse chapter 9. Look at it with me. I'm just going to read part of this. Think about a king and his kingdom. 2 Chronicles chapter 9. I'm not going to read it all, but verse 19. Look at that. Good. Listen. Listen. Twelve lions stood there, one on each side of the six steps. Listen to what it says. Nothing like this had been made in any other kingdom. Then it goes on to say in verse 20, All King Solomon's drinking vessels were gold. <laughs> the Tupperware weren't there. No, gold stuff. Listen to what it says. He said, gold stuff. And the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. No one... Not one was silver, for this was accounted as nothing in the days of Solomon. All your silverware, nothing. For the king's ships went to Tarshish. It tells us three years they bought in uh, gold and silver, all these animals. Look at verse 22. So King Solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth and riches and wisdom. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom which God had put in his heart. Each man bought his present articles of silver and gold and garments and armor and spices and horses and mules and set a rate year by year. Listen to verse 25. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots, 12,000 horsemen whom he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. Verse 26, he reigned over all the kings from the river of the land of the Philistines as far as the border of Egypt. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones. And he made cedar trees as abundant as the sycamores which are in the lowland. And they brought horses to Solomon from Egypt and from all of the land. You say what he's saying? Think of Solomon. Listen, so much so, so well, so large, so enormous. He says he made the silver just as common stones. Nothing but pebbles. Nothing but rock. Just just nothing. Silver was nothing. 
Think of Nebuchadnezzar. You read about him. He ruled nations and nations. I was reading about Alexander the Great. Think of him. Conquered Babylon. And all the area around it. And here's what history says of him. Such a, such a king. And, and there with Babylon and a conqueror. And it says this. That it literally at 33 years old. You know what he did? He sat down and he literally cried to tears. Because he had nothing left to conquer. Nothing left. 33 years old. He had reached. What a king. And a kingdom. And you look now, England, Spain, France, Portugal, all have had great kingdoms. Even in recent times, Russia and a, and, a, and a kingdom. But church, my point is this. Great kings, great kings, stories of these kings. But listen, every one of them passed away. Every one of them here one day, gone the next. I just, my mind went to walking down the beach. That was a good place to get to. Just walking down the beach. Sandy and I like to get, get there, maybe when everyone else is not there, and we just walk down the beach. Isn't it something? Miles, you can go down the beach walking down, and some people put a lot of time in sand castles. I mean, not just castles. I mean, beautiful works of architect. I mean, they build and build in the sand, and I'll tell you, it's fabulous. And they build these things and you walk by and you admire it and you look at those castles, Wayne, those villages that they have and kingdoms that they build. And you know, you walk on down the beach. You get tired and you turn and you go back. And while you were walking, the tide changed. And when the tide changed, you know what happens? The waves come in because the tide comes up. And when the, by the time you get back there, you see that kingdom that was there, that beautiful, magnificent work of art, and what's happened? The waves of time have come in. The tide of time has come in. And what's happened is washed every bit of it away, just like sand back out into the ocean. Church, that's the way it is with life. It's the same way with the kings and kingdoms of this world. Tide of time has got them. The waves of life have got them. Things of life have got them. And they're here one day and they are going the next of these kingdoms. I begin to think of the political scene. I know I'm here, but just hang with me. The political scene you're in today. Think about what's going on, especially with these presidential candidates. Not getting into all that. But listen, some people spend their entire lives their entire finances, their entire energies, all to what? On building a political kingdom, trying to get their so-called leader into that place. And you know something? It's only for a short season. It's only for a short number of years. They may be rejoicing right after it. They're rejoicing because their earthly ruler their earthly leader got elected and he's in that place. But church, history's taught us. We well know it. It's only temporary. It's only going to be for a short time. And people have spent their life in building and building that political kingdom. Think about this. Think about this earth. Think about, in some ways, people worshiping this earth. Worshiping it like a kingdom, so to speak thinking it's going to be here forever and ever and ever. And listen, I don't know what you think right now about climate change. I'm not going there either. I'm staying out of it with you. I don't know what you think about all the hype of climate change. But I do know this, the climate's changing. It is changing because it's always been changing. It's been changing since the start and it's going to keep on changing. I know this, the land is changing. It's changing around us. The very island that you live on is changing. I just got a, a rude awakening in that. Uh, one day Sandy and I were in the boat and we were going to go around to the other side of the island. Ted, I got lost. Many times as I've been over there, I got lost. Uh, the end of the island is not the end of the island, if you notice that now. It's not there. Where is it at? It's gone. The end of the island's getting closer. Ned, it's getting real close to you. See, it's coming in. The end of the island, is, it's all changing. The island you are on is changing. You say, Kenny, what are you saying to us this morning? Listen, it's this. One day, the Bible tells us even about this earth. It's going to be, the sun will be just like a flashlight that's running out of battery, 
running out of energy. The sun is going to lose that shine in this earth that we live in. It's going to run out of energy. One day the Bible says even the very clouds in the heavens, they're going to fold right up just like a garment that has wore out. I'll show you that. Hebrews chapter 1. I want to read that to you. Hebrews 1 verse 10. I want you to see about the kingdom. I want you to see about nothing lasts forever. 1 and verse 10 through 12. Look what it says. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Verse 11, they will perish, but you remain. They will all grow old like a garment, like a garment that wears out. Like a cloak, you will fold them up, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not fail. Church, this is a wonderful time. It is a wonderful time of year for you and I to remember the message, the same message that the angel gave to Mary. And what is that? That his kingdom, hallelujah, his kingdom will never end. Christ right now is building an eternal kingdom. You say, how is this happening? How can he build a kingdom that will never end? I'll tell you how. Listen, church, he's building a kingdom that will never end because the builder and maker is not man. The builder and maker is not an architect of this world. The builder and maker of this kingdom is God and God Almighty. Hallelujah. And you say, how is he going to build it so it will last and last and last? Because this king and this builder is not using wood to build his kingdom. He's not using brick to build his kingdom. He's not using stone to build his kingdom. He's not using silver to build his kingdom. He's not using steel to build his kingdom. No church. You say, well, what's he building this kingdom with? God's building a kingdom and it's out of people. Hallelujah. Called the church. Woo! Hallelujah! You and I. Here's what he said. He said, for the kingdom of God. He said, it's not eating and drinking. It's not tangible. It's not earthly. It's not of substance or a mass that's made here from man. He said, it's not eating and drinking. But this kingdom is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's supernatural spiritual kingdom. And he tells us, he compares you and I as born again believers believers to live in stones. Hallelujah. I'm looking out there and I'm seeing a lot of living stones this morning. I'm a living stone. You're a living stone. Not a dead stone. I'm not a rock. You might think so. I'm a living stone. That's what he tells us this morning. Living stones that he's using to do what? William, I'm glad you're a living stone. I'm glad you're a living stone. I'm glad he's made you part of this body and the kingdom of God and he's built building that city. He's building that kingdom out of stones. Oh, I got to show you in the Word. You might not believe me. 1 Peter 2, 4 and 5. 1 Peter 2 and verse 4. Look what it says. Coming to Him as to a living stone. Rejected but chosen. Re- rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Now, here you are. You also as what? Living stones are being built up. A what? A spiritual house. (laughs) A spiritual house. A holy priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Church, remember the message. This kingdom, he told her, will never ever end. It's not going to end. You're in a kingdom that's being built up because it's made up of living stone. I'm so glad I'm a living stone being built and God's building me and building his kingdom with it. Hallelujah. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about he's building that kingdom and it's going to go on forever and ever and ever Remember the message. This Christmas, remember the message of His kingdom. There'll be no end. God's building a kingdom. It's a kingdom of people. 
a holy priesthood. It's supernatural or it's nothing. A holy priesthood. Living stones and his kingdom will last forever. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for every stone. I thank you, Lord, that you're building this kingdom. And I thank you, Lord, somehow I'm a living stone. It's all a miracle. Well, number two, the message. Remember the message. The first one is this, his kingdom will never end. Number two, the message that we need to always remember, that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Look at verse 37. The angel told Mary this. He said this, the angel Gabriel's message to Mary was, for with God nothing will be impossible. You read about the angel coming to Mary to let her know what God was planning. And his plans included her. And naturally, like any of us, you can believe she's having a hard time with this. Understanding all that he's telling her and believing it. The angel appears to her to see an angel is one thing. But then he tells her, blessed are you among women. Blessed are you. I'm sure Mary said, me? Blessed are you. Among women. Then later he tells her, do not be afraid, Mary. He knew she was afraid. Who wouldn't be? He said, do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Blessed are you, woman, and you found favor with God. And an angel is telling you this. You can imagine what's going on in her mind. It tells us what's happening. Look at verse 29. Here's what's happening in her mind. But when she saw him, she's troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. In other words, she's saying, I'm trying to figure all this out. What, what's the angel meaning here? In church, we see why she's busy trying to grab a hold of just that. Then he tells her this, and behold, you're going to conceive in your womb and bring forth the son, and his name is Jesus. So he's dropped it all on her. You're favored, highly favored among women, and you're going to conceive. What a promise. Church, isn't it something about these promises of God? Isn't it something that when they're there and we have them in the Word of God for us, isn't it something that many times they're beyond our ability to comprehend? These promises are beyond our ability to get there. And I'm sure it was beyond her ability that a virgin could have birth to a child. It's beyond human logic. It's something humanly impossible. But we must remember what he told her. With God, all things are possible. Think of what he's worked so far. Zachariah and Elizabeth could not have a child in their old age. But listen, it was no problem for God to solve. Not a problem for God to solve, no matter how old they were. A virgin, Mary, giving birth. Impossible. It's not too big for God to solve. Not a problem for him. None of us sitting in here this morning could take our sins away. None of us could do anything with the sin and shame upon us. But listen, it weren't a problem for God to solve. He built a cross, took the cross, hung on the cross, so you and I could be forgiven of our sins. Think about it. All the stories you read. Jonah, swallowed by a whale. Who can get there? You can't understand that. I can't understand that. I know this is God. It's God and I believe it. And it's not a problem for Him to solve. Think about life. Think about breath. Think about what's been given to you. God would take dirt. God would take from the earth. He'd make man breathe into him the breath of life. Think about that. How did he even create these eyes I'm reading with? How did he create these ears you're listening with? I don't get it. I don't understand it. I just know this. He's God. He's God and all things are possible with God. And the angel comes to Mary and she's baffled with all this. It's more than she can take in. And he says, I'll give you the solution. It's not too hard for me. He tells her with God, all things are possible. There's no promise in this word of God that goes without power. No promise that he gives that does not have the power to deliver and to come to fulfillment. And you may be in here this morning. You say, well, get it to me. Get it to where I'm walking. Okay, I will. Listen, you're in here today and you desperately need answers. You need answers to something. Maybe you're in here this morning and you desperately need guidance and you need direction in your life. 
Maybe you're here today and you just say, you know what I need most of all? I need His presence. I just need His presence. Church is good. Prayer is good. Uh, going through church is I just need His presence. Maybe you're in here this morning and you're weak in yourself. Maybe you're without strength to cause a change in a situation that you're dealing with in life. And you just, you just can't get there and you can't cause the change. Maybe you're in here to, this morning and there's a promise that He's given you. And with everything in you, like her, you're trying to comprehend it. And it's beyond comprehension. Maybe that's you. I want to tell you, remember the second message. Remember the second message that he gave to her. With Christmas, remember the message that with God, all things are possible. With God, nothing whatsoever is impossible. There may be some this morning, he's give you a dream. I want to say to you, don't give up on it. Don't give up on the dream if God's given you that dream. Listen, He'll bring it to pass. If God gave it, He has the power to deliver. If God gave it, it'll come to fulfillment. No doubt, no matter what the doubt, doubt sayers say, no matter what others tell you, no matter what the enemies tell you, if He's give you a dream, listen, hold on to it and don't give up on that dream. Why are you saying this? Because with God, hallelujah, all things are possible. Praise God. And do you believe that this morning? It's possible with God. That's the message that he told her so here's the message the kingdom's never going to end the second message he told her all things are possible with God and number three the message that the angel gave to Mary that we need to remember is this faith pleases God faith pleases God all of you couldn't be here Wednesday Wednesday I was sharing about living by faith. And I was sharing in that, and I want to add to faith pleases God, I want to say this, know this too, weak faith works also. Weak faith does work also. And I was sharing Wednesday night crowd how Peter, and he was in prison, James has done been killed, Peter knows he's next. But the church had a prayer meeting and they began to pray. They're praying. They're going through the motion of prayer. But I don't believe there was a whole lot of faith mixed there. You say, why do you believe that? Because when he came knocking on the door and Peter showed up and he was freed out of prison, they were blown away. They could not believe it. They were astonished. They said, what? You know, she even took off running. The servant did and left. She could not believe it was Peter. I don't know that there was a whole lot of faith in their prayers. I just don't. But you know what? God answered their prayer. Weak faith works also. You understand? But faith pleases God. And as a matter of truth and a matter of fact, here's what Hebrews 11:6 6 says. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Impossible. So we must have faith, but understand weak faith does work too. And I want you to see this with me and then I'll come to a close. Because every day we're building up to Christmas and we need to be pleasing God with our faith. Listen what it tells us here. Luke 1, 18 through 20. I want you to see this. Luke 1, and I know I'm jumping here back to Zechariah, but I'm comparing the two. The angel Gabriel's been to Zechariah and now he's to Mary. And I want you to say, have you ever asked questions to God? Do you ever question Him? Anybody ever question God? Yeah. You say, look, God, God I, you know, so look, these two question God. Zachariah questioned God. Mary questioned God. And I want you to see this. Both of them have questions when the angel came to them with impossible plans. But 18 through 20 of chapter 1. Here he's coming to Zach, or the angel Gabriel to Zachariah says, And Zachariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? He's telling him, You're going to have this child. John the Baptist is going to come on the scene. But he said, How shall I know this? He said, For I'm an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. And I was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. Verse 20, But behold, You'll be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe in my words which be, will be fulfilled on their own time. So Zechariah questioned the angel and the angel 
gave him a sign. Not a very good sign. It was really a slap of rebuke. What did he do? And some of you might would like to do that. I shouldn't have said that. But listen, he gave him a slap of rebuke. And you know what it was? He silenced him. He said, okay, you got nine months judgment. Nine months judgment of silence. In other words, you're going to be mute. You're going to be unable to speak. Nine months. Now, they came back later, but that's what he said. You questioned me. And nine months judgment. Well, listen, we also read about Mary. Mary's going to question him, right? Look at verse 34. Verse 34. Angel tells her all these big plans. Same angel. And look at verse 34. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be? Since I do not know a man. But look what happens here. Mary's not given the silent treatment. No, Mary's given a promise. Mary's given a word. She's given a message to hold on to. And that message is this, Mary, for nothing will be impossible with God. With God, nothing will be impossible. So here's what I said, God, what's up here? I mean, I want to please you with faith. And I even want to please you when my faith is shallow and it's, it's small faith. But whoa here, do I even get the question in this? One of them questions you and he's zapped with silence. The other questions you and he gets a promise. Are you with me? And, and, and look what's happening here. Zachariah questions nine months. Silence. Mary questions and she's encouraged. So I had two questions. What's the difference? What's the difference? And the other question and is faith that pleases God ever okay to ask questions of God? Isn't that a good question? God, is, is, is my faith that pleases you, is it ever okay for me to ask questions of you? Because I see here one man, he didn't fare too good. And the other gets the promise. I don't know here. Was Zachariah maybe... When he spoke to the angel, maybe the angel saw something or heard something in his voice. Maybe he saw something in his expression and he was able to see some unbelief there on his face. <laughs> you understand he knows your thoughts. He already knows. He don't need, need to see anything. He knows our thoughts. He knows what we're, what, what's going on in here. And I'll tell you what he saw in Zachariah's heart. He saw doubt. He saw doubt. Look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. But behold, you're going to be mute and unable to speak until the day these things take place because, because you did not believe my words. You do not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their own time. He didn't believe. He saw he didn't believe. Zechariah asked questions, but he asked in a spirit of unbelief. A spirit of unbelief. But with Mary, with Mary she asked questions, but she asked in a spirit of belief. She asked with a spirit of belief. Because you see in this her faith and her humility in asking. She did not doubt that it couldn't happen. She did not doubt his word. What she was struggling with was how's it going to take place? How's all this going to unfold? How's this plan? I'm not doubting your plan. I'm not doubting your plan. It says she might have been 18 years old. It might have been easier for her to believe. But then it might be Easier for the older saints to believe. I don't know where you're at. I'm just saying, be careful here. But listen, don't have a spirit of disbelief, unbelief. Don't doubt his word. You might have questions about God. Now, how's this going to unfold? And that's what she did here. You say, how do you know that? Look at verse 45. I'm stopping. Are you with me? Verse 45. Verse 45, look. Look what it tells us. Blessed is she who what? Believed. She believed. No spirit of unbelief there. She had trouble with how it's going to take place, and who wouldn't? But she believed his word. She believed, for there will be fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. 
So what are you saying here? Telling you this morning, it's all right to ask questions. Go ahead and ask them. I think it's safe that you can ask the Lord questions. But we should always ask with a spirit of faith, a spirit of humility, and belief. Somehow, church, when this happened, the light came on for Mary. Man, it came on just like that. That one spoken promise, the one spoken promise was a revelation of the Lord's continual presence. All things are going to be possible with me. And Mary did what? Believed. Mary believed. Then Mary said this, Blessed be the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to what? Your word. I believe your word. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I believe your word. Blessed be the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be. That's what she said. I'm going with your plan, God. And then came her miracle. You may be needing a miracle today. I tell you, this is it. Don't get in that spirit of unbelief. Stay in belief. You might not know how it's going to happen. I just began to sing, sitting in my I don't know how he's going to do it, but God's going to do it. No matter how hard the case may be. It's the same thing that they're saying here. Case may be, he'll see us through it. That old mountain standing in my way, he's going to move it when I get to it. Well, I don't know how he's going to do it, but God's going to do it. Well, I don't know how he's going to do it, but God, your word is true. I'm going to believe it. You're going to do it. No matter how hard the case may be, you'll see us through it. That old mountain standing in my way, he's going to move it when I get to it. I don't know how you're going to do it. That's what Mary said. I don't know how, but you're going to do it. Woo! Hallelujah. You are going to do it is what he's telling us here. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God, you can do it. Look to your neighbor and say, God, you're going to do it. God, you're going to do it. Praise God. Faith pleases God. Stand with me. That's enough. Boy, we get a hold of all that, I'll tell you. I don't know. Listen, I want to say this to you this morning. Faith pleases God. That was the third message. But remember, maybe the Lord's been trying to encourage me to say, Kenny, weak faith works also. Weak faith works also. I want to say to you, use whatever faith you got. Use whatever faith you have for the place that God has given you. God's given you that measure of faith. Use it. And I want to say this. Don't pray or wait and pray until you feel that your faith has reached some level. <laughs> I'm telling you, I want to say that again to somebody. Don't wait to pray until you feel that your faith has reached some level. Pray. That church prayed and God answered it. Don't wait to pray until you feel that it's reached that place. I'll just say this to you. Faith's already strong enough. If God's giving you that measure of faith, it's already strong enough. You say, how can you say that? Because I know God's love strong. God's love is for you is so strong that He'll take that weak faith. He'll take that weak faith and He will work on that mountain and move in your life. So the Lord sometimes answers prayers when it seems like we don't have no faith at all. But He can do it. So continue to ask Him. Continue to pray in a spirit of faith and a spirit of humility. Now, I want to read this to you and give time to pray. Uh, this was in a, a devotional I'd give to a number of people in the Bible study years ago. And it's really, it's a very... Very good devotional, but it says nothing will be impossible. I want to close this out this morning with this. Nothing will be impossible. The angel Gabriel told Mary that God was planning to do something humanly impossible. All human logic would agree that a virgin could not give birth to a child. It was impossible. Yet this is exactly what was to happen. 
When God speaks of doing the impossible, it's no longer absurd. When was the last time God did the impossible in your life? When was the last time God spoke to you about what He wanted to do and you were scared to death by its magnitude? God still does the impossible. Too often we acknowledge our belief that God can do whatever He wants. Then we add a safety clause. But I just don't think God will do that for me. We become practical atheists, believing that God can perform miracles, but never expecting a miracle in our own lives. God wanted to bring salvation to all of humanity. It is critical that Mary not only believed God could perform a miracle, but also adjusted her life to the awesome work He planned to do through her. The difference between a Christian and a moral person is the divine. The difference between a church and a social club is the miraculous. Some can duplicate the morality of a Christian, but no one can reproduce the miraculous that should be a part of the Christian experience. Do you believe that nothing is impossible with God? Wow, what a devotion to wake up to. God, with God all things are possible. So you're here this morning. Maybe this Christmas season you need to remember this message. God's kingdom's never going to end. This one's going, I'm telling you, it's fading away, it's not going to last. But God's kingdom is never going to end. I want you to just reflect on that a minute. Are you part of that kingdom? See, He wants to take you and make you a living stone. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've not made Him Messiah, if you've not made Him Savior, you're just a stone. (laughs) You're just a rock. But He wants to take and breathe life into you spiritual life and make you a living stone so that you'll be in that kingdom and you will reign forever and ever with Him. Right? So this morning, if you haven't done that, today, this is a wonderful seat. Remember the message. You want to be in the kingdom is going to last forever and ever and ever, don't you? But you're going to step into that kingdom and live with Him forever and ever. He wants to make you a living stone. Secondly, the message is this. You may be in here and you're struggling some issue. Something in your life seems impossible. You can't make a change in and of yourself. He tells us here with God, all things are possible. And today He wants to minister to you, prove Himself, and let you know it's possible. And maybe you're in here today and you're saying, Kenny, I'll tell you this faith thing and mine is really struggling. It's weak faith. God answers weak faith. He'll do it. Faith pleases God. Bring what faith you do have. Pray. Give it to Him and watch God move. But faith pleases God. And you got to get into that faith realm of believing God for what you need this morning. So praise God. We're going to pray. We're going to open these altars to prayer. But right now, I want you to just close your eyes with me just for a minute in respect to others. Because listen, you may be in here today. You've heard this message. And again, you're saying, I've not made this Jesus you're speaking of my Lord and Savior, and I truly need Him in my life. And you're in here today, and you say, I want to be a living stone. I want to be in that kingdom that's going to last. If you're in here today, and you say, I need to make Jesus Lord of my life. I want to make Him my Savior and Lord. Listen, I want to pray with you. There will be people that want to pray with you. And we're going to come this morning, and we're going to gather together as a church and pray over these situations and needs. Listen, I want you to come with them. I want you to come with them and ask Jesus in your heart and life. Maybe this morning you want to acknowledge that. No one's looking. Would you say, Kenny, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not a living stone. I'm not made in my Lord and Savior. And this morning you'd like to do that. I want you to lift your hand. You say, why am I doing that? You're embarrassing me. No one's looking. I want to know so I can pray for you. This is serious. He wants you to be a part of His kingdom. And if you're here today and you say, I see this opportunity and I'm going to take it. I want to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. I want to make Him my King. Anyone this morning, you want to raise your hand and say, pray for me. 
I see that hand. Praise God. Anyone else? That hand, that hand, anyone else? Say, I want that hand. Anyone else? God sees. Hold your hands up. No one's looking. Hold your hands up. Church, agree with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see these people? You see these ones this morning have lifted their hands. I am asking such love of God. God would just embrace them right now. God, the love of Jesus this morning would just overwhelm them to see what you've done for them, how much you love them. And this morning, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. We ask you to come into our heart and life. We believe that you are the Son of God. We believe that you came and died and gave your life and rose again that we can have everlasting life. We believe this morning that you're Jesus and we make you our Savior and our Lord. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, it'd be a wonderful time to come with the church and rejoice with Him. So as they sing this morning, church, would you come gather around these altars? You that accepted Christ as your Savior, come this morning. We want to pray with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah.
Praise God, church. Lord bless you. God bless your people. Go with us. Use us for your glory. Hallelujah. God help us to be that light for you in this special season. Come back tonight, church. We're here to hear Tucker and support him. God bless you.